The U.S. administration currently sees inviting Ukraine to join NATO as unproductive, thus no steps towards this will be made at the upcoming Washington summit in July. Evo H. Dalder, head of the Chicago Council on Global Affairs, emphasized in an interview with RT.LT that it is more meaningful to outline the conditions under which all NATO members would agree to proceed with Ukraine's potential membership. Dalder, an experienced expert on U.S. and European security who served under President Bill Clinton and was the U.S. ambassador to NATO from 2009 to 2013, provided insights at the Lennart Meredith Conference in Tallinn, discussing the current status of the war in Ukraine from both military and political perspectives. Dalder expressed more optimism about Europe's position compared to the United States. The recent debate in the U.S., particularly within the Republican Party, reveals significant issues regarding America's role in global affairs and its willingness to support Ukraine. But before we continue, if you're enjoying this briefing, please kindly support this channel by liking and clicking the subscribe button below to subscribe to this channel and to help YouTube learn of your preferences and enable you receive new video updates every time they are uploaded on this channel. Thank you. Let's get going. This debate is unlikely to dissipate, and if Donald Trump is re-elected, future aid to Ukraine could be negatively impacted. Even without Trump, the debate will continue. Dalder noted Europe's commendable efforts in supporting Ukraine, although there are minor differences within the EU. The primary issue is less about political will and more about military capability, as it will take time to regenerate defense production and financial resources to sustain the will. This reality affects the situation on the ground in Ukraine. The past six months have been a significant setback for Ukraine due to uncertainties about U.S. support, ammunition shortages, and inadequate air defense capability. This has negatively impacted Ukrainian morale while boosting Russian morale. The Russians, feeling they are no longer losing, are taking more risks, while Ukraine is concerned about its manpower and energy to win the war. The coming months will be tough, with a 75% chance of the lines shifting slightly, a 15% chance of significant adverse movement, and a 10% chance of other outcomes. The situation is unlikely to stabilize soon, possibly until 2025. Regarding the upcoming NATO summit in Washington, Dalder believes it will focus on reviewing the implementation of defense plans agreed upon in Vilnius. The summit will likely see NATO members committing to bolstering the eastern flank, increasing defense spending, and moving forces. Changes initiated in Madrid and progressed in Vilnius will continue, solidifying NATO's role as a serious military alliance for defending its members. However, Ukraine will not receive an invitation to join NATO at this summit. The debate now is on how to demonstrate NATO's long-term commitment to Ukraine's integration. This involves determining how much support for Ukraine should be bilateral versus overseen by NATO and finalizing bilateral security agreements into something potentially called the Ukraine Compact. Although this is not ideal, Dalder suggests it is more practical than pushing for NATO membership amidst political disagreement and U.S. election interference. If the situation in Ukraine worsens significantly, falling into the 15% scenario where Ukraine struggles to hold the line, there might be a serious debate on direct intervention by some NATO countries. Leaders from countries like Lithuania, France, and Finland might push for more direct action, though NATO membership for Ukraine is unlikely due to the prolonged process. Regarding potential Russian reactions to increased NATO involvement, Dalder believes Russia would avoid escalating the conflict, especially with nuclear weapons due to pressures from China and the certainty of a decisive NATO response. Russia's current focus is on managing the conflict with Ukraine without further complicating the situation by expanding it. The hesitation in some Western countries, including the US and Germany, about Ukraine's deeper integration into NATO stems from the view that an invitation alone is meaningless. The real issue is about Ukraine becoming a NATO member, which takes time, especially given the current war. NATO membership for Ukraine is not feasible while it is still at war, as this would make NATO a direct party to the conflict. Instead, defining conditions for moving towards membership is more productive, although achieving consensus on this is also challenging. If Trump is re-elected, Dalder is concerned that U.S. military aid to Ukraine could stop. More alarming is Trump's disregard for alliances in NATO, which could lead to the U.S. withdrawing from NATO, significantly impacting the alliance's cohesion in future. The growing anti-NATO sentiment within the Republican Party further complicates the situation, reflecting a shift in public opinion that challenges the long-standing bipartisan support for NATO. There is an argument for Europe to become more strategically autonomous and militarily capable. Dalder agrees, suggesting that Europe must strengthen its capacity for action within NATO rather than solely within the EU, involving countries like Canada, Britain, and Norway. A stronger European pillar within NATO would benefit both Europe and the US, making NATO a more formidable alliance. Deterring future Russian aggression against Ukraine could be achieved by integrating Ukraine into NATO or a similar security structure. This would ensure Ukraine's security, much like the Baltic states' security within NATO, 
Russia historically seeks security through the insecurity of its neighbors. And this mindset will continue unless Russia recognizes that its security is intertwined with that of its neighbors. Hence, NATO membership or a robust security arrangement is crucial for Ukraine's long-term security. That's where we wrap things up for the time being. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.